Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, PBC. Good evening, visitors, all who are joining us on tonight. Right where you are, come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Give God glory. Lift him up on tonight. We thank God. Amen for blessing us. Thus far on this week, he is great, and he's greatly to be praised. He's a faithful God. He's a loving God. He's a healing God. He's a merciful God. And on tonight, we've come to exalt his name. Amen. Won't you do me a favor? Amen. Click that share button on your page. Share this with somebody. Amen. Share this to your timeline. Reach out to somebody even now. Call them up. Text them. Amen. Ask them to join us. Amen. On tonight. Yeah, let them know. Pastor wants you to join us on tonight. God's got a word for you. Amen. We want you to turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. As we continue in our study, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and so we'll give you a minute to turn there. While you're turning there, amen, we want to lift up persons who stand in need of prayer, amen, continue to be in prayer for the Pickett family. Monday, we had the homegoing celebration for Sister Sharon Pickett, and so we want to continue to lift that family up to the Lord in prayer, continue to be in prayer for Deacon Sharps, Sister Stella Taylor, Brother Robert Dixon, Sister Rosetta Randall, Trustee McDaniel, Sister Rita Weaver, Trustee Meadows. We want to continue to intercede for all of those persons in our bulletin as well. Amen. We want to be the priest that God has called us to be. Look, we need some van drivers. We need the vans up and running. And so we've been having them repaired and so just about amen ready uh, to have them available to pick up people, bring them to worship Amen, and take them back home. And so if you're interested in being a van driver, amen, please contact the main office. Give us your name. Give us your number. Amen. This is a paid position. Let me say that. It is a paid position. So if you're interested in being a van driver, you feel like God has gifted you for that, we want you to contact the main office as soon as possible. Amen. Amen. If you believe in the power of prayer, why don't you, amen, close your eyes, amen, bow your head as we go before the Lord. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Oh, God, on tonight we come lifting your name on high. We come, God, giving you total praise for you alone are worthy. You are so faithful. You are so kind. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you, God, for watching over us. Thank you for the anointing that you have on our lives, the gifts, God, that you have blessed us with to be a blessing unto your people. And so we come on tonight, God, just giving you all the glory and all the honor. We come on tonight, God, believing in the power of prayer, asking you, God, to comfort those who have had loved ones to go on from this side. Yes, we know that weeping may endure for a night. Joy will come in the morning. So bless the families with your joy. Then, God, grant them your peace from on high. We ask you, God, to encourage them, walk with them as they continue, God, to believe and trust 
that you will take care of them. Take away the pain. Take away the hurt. Bring upon healing, God, in its season. We lift up those who are sick, those who are in pain, God, asking you uh, to touch their bodies. Whatever the illness, whatever the disease or sickness that they may have, God, we're asking you to be the great physician. We're asking you, God, to provide that balm from Gilead. Asking you, God, to be with doctors and nurses, anoint them, lead them, guide them in order for your people to bounce back, in order for them to heal and recover. And grant them, God, patience, yes, to wait on you, to know, God, that you're working all things together for their good. Strengthen their bodies even now. We ask you, God, to surround them with your presence. Shower down your love. Bless them, God, with your favor. And then, God, on tonight, we come asking for a word from on high. We need, God, for you to speak into our lives on tonight. We're trusting, God, that you have fresh revelation for us on tonight as we journey uh, along the path that you have ordained for us. Anoint me afresh to be a blessing unto your people. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Come on one more time. Put those hands together. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Give God the honor. Give him the praise. Bless him with the fruit of your lips. Amen. Amen. Don't forget high school graduates. If you graduate from high school this year, amen, and you are a member of Providence, we want you uh, to submit your name Amen. The school where you're graduating from and if applicable, amen, the college that you will be attending. We need you to do that by uh, Wednesday, June the 21st because we want to acknowledge, amen, all high school graduates on June 25th. You know how we do it. We have the graduates to walk in and so we want you to be a part of that. Uh, event that will take place on the 25th. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, we're talking about it's your season. And what a fruitful, blessed time we've had thus far in this series. Amen. I've had a number of people to approach me and inform me of how uh, encourage how blessed they have been as a result of God pouring out uh, to us uh, what he has for us. And so on the last time we met, amen, we left off talking about the fact that seasons are repeatable, that seasons are repeated, repeatable. We talked about Amen, how we're in summer now, but, but guess what, fall will come, and after fall, winter, and after winter, uh, spring, and then guess what, we're right back to summer, right back to fall, right back to winter, and so sometimes we may feel like we're going in circles, but in reality, we need to understand that seasons are repeatable. Sometimes we feel like we've done something wrong. <laughs> amen. But we need to understand, amen, just like the change that we have in seasons over and over again, amen, seasons uh, for the most part are repeatable. And 
time. So you, you're going to have some seasons where, amen, it feels like spring. You'll have seasons where it feels like summer. A amen. Those are normally, amen, the enjoyable times, the good times, you know, uh, seasons when we uh, got a job, seasons when we have provision, seasons when the marriage is going well, where, where the ministry, amen, is moving forward in the direction that God has ordained, seasons when the children, amen, are on the right track, A amen, those are spring and summer seasons, enjoyable seasons, seasons of graduation, seasons where you experience marriage, amen, uh, the wedding, uh, wonderful seasons, A amen, but then there are seasons that, that feel like fall, where the weather changes, there are seasons where it feels like winter, it's cold. Yeah, and, and so those are seasons where we have trouble in the marriage. Maybe even you go through separation, or maybe you even experience divorce. Yeah, that's fall, that's, that's winter. A amen, seasons where you are afflicted with a sickness or an illness. Seasons when you are laid off from the job, seasons when you are having trouble, amen, with your business, seasons where, amen, you experience eviction from the house or the car gets repossessed. Th those are fall, those, amen, are winter seasons that we all experience in life. And so that helps us in having uh, the right perspective as it pertains to the journey that God has us on. <coughs> because at the end of the day, we're not going to experience spring and summer seasons all the days of our lives. We're not going to experience even fall and winter seasons all the days of our lives. But we will have a repeat <laughs> of seasons. Somebody may be experiencing that at this present time. Amen. You're facing something uh, right now that you faced in the past. You, you're going through something. Amen, that you've already been through. Why? Because seasons are repeatable. I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 8. Amen. And I want you to look at verse number 22. You ought to jot this down. If you have your tablet, if you have a pen, pencil, paper, this is God, amen, making covenant with, with Noah. Yeah. God making covenant with Noah and with all of creation. In, in verse number 22, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Genesis chapter 8, verse number 22, it says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Y'all see that? While the earth remains, while, while the earth, amen, is still here, God says seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not 
sees. That there it is, right there in Genesis, God lets us know that seasons are repeatable. So that you're not caught off guard, that you're not shocked, that you're not surprised. A amen. Uh, we need to understand, amen, that as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest. A amen. If you, if you are a farmer, a amen, you got you a green thumb. You, you know, amen, there comes a season, amen, where you sow seed into the ground. It, there's a particular time, a, amen, it repeats itself, amen, year after year. At this particular time, if you want a crop, amen, you got to sow the seed in the ground, guess what, at this particular season. Every year, it's repeatable. If you want the harvest to be produced at a certain time, you got to make sure, amen, you sow seed in the ground at a particular time. And if you sow the seed in the ground at the particular time that you're supposed to, after certain, amen, length of time, amen, you'll get a harvest. If you do what you supposed to do throughout that process, amen, you'll, you'll get the harvest, guess what, in due season. It's repeatable. Mm. Yeah. And, and so with that, guess what that means? That means that we have to be persistent. If it's repeatable, that means it's coming around again. So I, I have to be persistent. I have to be consistent. Because seasons are repeatable. A amen. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're in a winter season right now, don't, don't worry. A amen. Spring is coming. Because seasons are repeatable. Oh, my God. Yeah, if you're having difficulties, if you're having challenges right now, uh, you ought to be encouraged because your, your season is bound to shift, amen, after a while. It won't last always. Oh, my God. And, and so we want to be mindful of, of, of the fact that we may experience, amen, summer again. We may experience winter again. We may experience fall again. We may experience spring again so that we are not, amen, shocked, surprised, and caught off guard. It, it's... It's called life. So the Lord says, as long as the earth endures, you're going to always have this. You're going to have seed time. You're going to have harvest. Oh, I love it. God lets us know up front in Genesis at the beginning, you're going to have seed time and harvest. <coughs> you're going to have cold. You're going to have heat. You're going to have winter. You're going to have summer. Yeah. You're going to have day and you're going to have night. He said it shall not cease. So if it's day, guess what? You, you will experience night. If it's night, guess what? You will experience day. And guess what? It, it will go around and around and around because seasons are repeatable. A amen. Did that bless somebody on tonight? Oh, my God. Yeah, if it bless you, come on and click the share button. Share the page to your timeline. Amen. Write something on the screen. Amen. If you were blessed by that.
that point on tonight that seasons are repeatable. Here's the next thing. Seasons are comprehensive. Seasons are comprehensive. When, when you look at, amen, this passage of scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, you'll see how thorough, <laughs> amen, these seasons are. Look at how, amen, detail to everything. There is a season and a time for every purpose, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time, amen, to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Look at how comprehensive it is. Look at how detailed Solomon puts it before us. Amen. He says seasons are comprehensive. They are thorough. Oh, my God, when you think about it, time to be born. Just think about everything that comes along with birthing a child. <laughs> just, just thinking about how, how detailed it is. A amen. From, from getting pregnant. Amen. Going to the doctor. Amen. Having to go to the classes where they teach you how to breathe and they teach you how to sit. A amen. Just thinking about all, amen, it, that, that's involved a, as it pertains to uh, giving birth to a, a child. A amen. Getting, getting the nursery together. Amen. Get, getting the decor together. Amen. Going to get the baby. Amen. Registry together. Oh my God. Yeah. Ordering all that you need. Amen. So that when the baby comes home. A amen. You'll have what you need right there at, at the house. Just think about how detailed, how I involved it, it, it gets from having baby showers. Oh, my God, to, to having or choosing to have an epidural or not. A amen. Just think about all that. that It's comprehensive. It's thorough. It's extensive, y'all. It can be exhausted. That, that's what Solomon is trying to get across to us. Amen, that seasons are comprehensive. There, it, it's not simple, y'all. That's what we're trying to get across to you on tonight. That, that, that seasons are complicated. Mm, that there's a lot involved, amen, when it comes to seasons that God has us uh, to deal with. You think about, amen, the birth uh, of the child and all that goes into, amen, deciding what the child's name it is going to be. Making sure you have arrangements, amen, uh, for when you have to go back to work, amen, making sure you have arranged who's going to take care uh, of the child. It, it, it's detail. It's it's thorough. You have to get the car seat. Oh my God! Yeah, it, it, it's it's thorough. It's 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 complicated. They gonna wake you up at night. It's you're gonna have to walk them around to try to get them back to sleep. Uh, and once you think they sleep, Amen. They wake back up. Guess what? It's complicated. It's it's detail. It's the, but guess what? In all of that, guess what? God is working on us. Working on our flexibility. Working on our patience. 
working on our understanding, uh, giving us wisdom, dropping some knowledge on us. Uh, yes, making us stronger. Yeah, that, that's what the season is all about. It's comprehensive, y'all. Even when you take a look at God's children, amen, the children of Israel. When, when you take a look at the children of Israel, and, and when they, in particular, were out in the wilderness, guess what? It, it was exhaustive. <laughs> they, they were out there for 40 years. It was thorough, extent, extensive. They, they went through one thing after another didn't have any water. Yeah, God provided for them. Did, didn't have any food. They wanted some food. Guess what? God provided for them. They, they came under attack. A amen. Guess, guess what? God fought. Amen. Their battles for them. That's where you see God referred to as Jehovah uh, Nisi. Yeah, the Lord is my banner. The Lord will fight my battles. He had to take them, amen, through the wilderness, amen, in order to grow them and develop them, in order to shape and mold them, in, in order to get some things out of them that they had within them from their time in Egypt. Amen. So God had to get some stuff out of them to prepare them for the place, amen, where he was taking them. And, and it wasn't simple. Oh, my God. Yeah, how many people know that life can be complicated? Uh, it can be exhaustive. And so they spent 40 years walking around what seemed to be in circle. There it is again, repeatable. They, they had a season, amen, that was extensive. But it was extensive, it was comprehensive because God, amen, was, was developing them into the nation that he was calling them to be. And so you need to understand that, that seasons, amen, watch this, they can last, amen, a long time. Oh, my God. Yeah, the training, the developing that God is doing in that particular season, trying to get you ready for the blessing, for the promise, for your Canaan that's already been set apart. Guess what? Even though it's comprehensive, we need to understand that it's not in vain. Sometimes you can feel like what you're doing, amen, is in vain. Sometimes you can feel like being faithful, amen, is pointless because guess what? You still end up in the wilderness. Oh, I'm talking to somebody on tonight. Amen. You've been faithful. You've been obedient. But, but you're still in a drought. You're still in a bind. You're still in a jam. Uh, you're still looking, amen, for God to bring the past, the promise that he ordained, amen, for your life. It's, compre it's comprehensive. Look, look, I want you to turn to James. I want you to turn to James chapter 1. Turn to James chapter 1. Very familiar passage. Starting at verse number 2. It says, my, my brethren counted all joy when you fall into various trials. Watch this. Knowing 
that the testing of your faith produces patience. I, I, I want us to focus on verse number four. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, one version says, mature and complete, lacking nothing. Y'all see that? But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect or mature and complete, lacking nothing. In, in, in other words, a, amen, God has to take us through a season, James says, where he tests our faith. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. God, God has to take you through various trials. And guess what? The various trials are there to do. The, the various trials are there to test your faith. You got trials at the house, trials, amen, at the church, trials right there, a amen, on the job. You got various trials. You got even personal trials going on with yourself. And James says, count it all joy because God is testing your faith. And, and the testing of your faith, guess what? It ain't in vain. It produces patience. Oh, because you got to wait on God to work it out. You got to wait on God to fix it. You got to wait on God to turn it around. You got to wait on God to heal you. The testing of your faith, it produces patience. And it says, but let patience have its perfect work. It's a perfect work, church. Let patience have its perfect work. There's a reason why God has you waiting. Let patience have its perfect work so that you can be perfect or mature and complete. Oh, my God. Because you got some stuff missing right now. That's what the Lord is saying. Yeah, yeah. I want you to be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Don't want you to lack anything. Because I got a promise for you. I, I, I got another season for you. I, I got a land flowing with milk and honey for you. And I want you to be mature. I want you to be complete, lacking nothing, so you don't mess up the blessing that I have in store for your life. See, God doesn't want us to get to Canaan, a amen, and, and end up losing Canaan because we're immature in our faith. So, 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 so let patience have its perfect work. Let God work on your weaknesses. See, see, God says lacking nothing. That means that God knows that we're not complete right now. We don't have what, what we need right now in, in, in order uh, to handle uh, the next season that he has for our lives. So he says, let patience have its perfect work. Because uh, if you remember, guess what? Yeah, uh, they had to deal with uh, uh, various enemies when they went into Canaan. It, 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 it wasn't like they just walked into Canaan, amen, and, and secured the land without any opposition. See, that's what the wilderness was for. It was to train them and to develop them so that they would be prepared for whatever they encountered once they got to the land of promise. Mm. I know some of us, we think we got it all together. <laughs> but, but God says some stuff is missing. Yeah, you're, you're not as mature as you, you think you are. <laughs> so, so, so I need you to go through various trials mm, 
because the testing of your faith is going to produce patience. And let patience have its perfect work. Mm, be, because I don't want you to lack nothing. Mm, I want you, amen, to be able to handle everything that you will encounter once you get to the place that I have ordained for your life. It's comprehensive, y'all. Oh, see, see, it, 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 if you've been going through for a while, guess what? That means that God has something great uh, uh, in store for your life. Look, if you're going through something, a amen, and you've been dealing with it for a while, this, this, this is only for a few people. Just, just type on the screen. I'm, I'm in for a great blessing. I, I'm in, a, amen, for abundance. I'm, I'm in uh, for, for overflow. With, with all that I've been going through, I've, after all this time I've been going through and dealing with, God must have something amazing in store for my life. It's, it's comprehensive, y'all. Uh, I want you to turn to Job. Job helps us out as well. Job chapter 23, verse number 10. Job says, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Oh, my God. Job said he knows the way that I take. God, God still has his eye on me. Uh, God still has me on his radar. Y'all know what Job went through. Yeah, lost his, his children. Yeah, lost his livestock. Uh, business went under. Oh, my God. Lost his servants. Oh, yeah, lost houses. Look, look, Job went through a lot. Look at what Job says in this 10th verse, in this 23rd chapter. He says, uh, but he knows the way that I take. Look at it just like James. He says, and when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Yeah, in order to get gold, guess what? You got to take away the impurities. You, it, it has to go through a, amen, uh, a process where you remove the impurities so that you can come forth, oh my God, as coal. I love it. You, you would think that Job had it all together. Job, amen, it, it says he was blameless in, in the sight of the Lord. It said he was upright, y'all. That, that Job was taking time, a, amen, every day, amen, uh, to go before the Lord in, in prayer, to to, to go before the Lord in worship. You, you, you would think that Job had it all together, but here Job is saying that God still had, had to work on me. He, he said, when he has tested me, mm, with all of that, Job still had to go through a test. Mm, with all of that, he, he had to go through various trials. One thing after another, but all of that, amen, was God, amen, removing some impurities from Job to prepare Job for the blessing that he had in store for him. It's comprehensive, y'all. It can be exhausting. It can last a long time. I'm trying to help us to understand seasons. See, because some people, guess what? They get 
discouraged to the point where they walk away from the faith. They walk away from God. They walk away from, from the church. They, they get to the point, amen, where, where they, they, they have nervous breakdowns. Mm. They get to the point where they stop tithing, amen. They get to the point where they stop serving be because they don't have the right perspective on seasons. See, that's what the enemy wants. That's why we come to you with, with this study, because the enemy wants you to walk away. The enemy wants you to cave in. The enemy wants you to bail out, because the enemy doesn't want you to get to the place that God has for you. Oh, but if you understand seasons, even though you go through various trials, you'll still maintain your trust in the Lord. Even though you go through various struggles, you'll still, amen, uh, worship the Lord. You'll still be faithful unto the Lord. You'll still walk in obedience, amen, what God has in store for your life. It's comprehensive. You and I need to understand that in order for us to get through this wilderness. You do know that some people didn't make it through the wilderness. You do know that there was a certain crowd who died in the wilderness. You, you remember Moses sent out the spies and ten of them came back with, with a bad report. He chose, amen, 12 spies, amen, 12 leaders. Look at it from each tribe. He got a leader. And 10 of the leaders came back with a negative report. Listen to me. 10 of the leaders came back with a bad report and to the point where they convinced some others who were in the camp that they could not go into Canaan and possess the land that God had already set apart for them. And as a result, guess what? They never made it to Canaan. They ended up dropping dead in the wilderness. That's why leaders, you have to be careful what you spread throughout the camp. Oh, my God. I'm not just talking about leaders at the church. I'm talking about leaders in the house. You got to be careful of the negativity, amen, that you spread in the house because it will cause people who embrace what you are telling them to miss out on the destiny that God has ordained for their life. They'll never possess the car, and they'll never possess a amen, the house, and they'll never possess the job. They'll never obtain the degrees that God has for them. Why? Because of the negativity that has spread throughout the house. Mm. But Caleb and Joshua said, we can do it. We can go in and possess it. Because what God has for us, it is for us. Mm. Seasons are comprehensive, y'all. They are thorough. Don't take it for granted. There's a reason why God has you in it for so long. Mm. He has something great, amazing, and awesome in store for your life. And so seasons are repeatable. Seasons are comprehensive. And here's the next thing. Seasons are uncontrollable. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably end with this on tonight. May have to spend some time with it. On, on next week. Yeah. 
Seasons, y'all, are uncontrollable. To everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, Solomon says. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stone and a time to gather stones together, uh, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Look, seasons, y'all, are uncontrolled. We can't control, amen, when summer gets here. Uh, ha, ha, have, have you ever looked forward to the season changing at a certain time? <laughs> you, you ever watch, amen, uh, the, 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 the weather uh, forecasters, a amen, and, and they're trying to forecast. It, we, we got our calendars, and it says on the calendar when summer is, is supposed to start. <laughs> ah, but, but have you ever experienced a season, a amen, where, where it felt like summer in the fall? It felt like winter in the spring. You were expecting spring to roll around at a certain time based upon what the weather folk told you and based upon what the calendar told you. But seasons, y'all, are uncontrollable. Oh, my God. You, you, can't, you can't contain seasons. You can't manipulate uh, you can't orchestrate your own season. Watch this. You, you, you can't go to God in prayer, amen, and, 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 and hope and pray and think that your prayer, amen, is going to be enough, amen, to manipulate God into changing your season. We find that even with Jesus. You remember Jesus out there in, in, in Gethsemane? He wanted his season to change. Y'all remember that? We, he, he went to God in, in prayer several times, asking the Lord, amen, to remove the cup from him. Oh, look at it. Here, here, here is the son of the living God, the Messiah, the Christ, amen, himself going to the father to ask the father to shift his season. If it be in thy will, let this cup pass from me. Mm. He, he was trying to get the father to change his season through prayer. Mm. Oh, my God, this is how a lot of people get frustrated. This is how a lot of people, amen, get upset and sometimes even angry with God because they think if they go to God in prayer that their prayer is enough, amen, to manipulate God into changing their season. And so if they, they pray and and. and and they don't get a call, amen, saying that they've been hired, amen. They get angry and upset with God because they thought by going to God in, in prayer was enough, amen, to, to have God to change the season. Mm, but seasons are uncontrollable. God, listen, church, is in Control. That's why Jesus had to finally say, nevertheless, oh, that's when you know you're mature. Oh, when, when you can go to God and say, nevertheless, I know I came to you, 
a amen, I want my season to change. I, I, I want this thing removed from my life. I, I, I want you, amen, to turn around this situation. But nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, somebody ought to write, nevertheless. Yeah, if you're mature, a amen, you ought to be able to write, nevertheless. Uh, yeah, I want the job, God. I'm, I'm still waiting on the job. A amen. I haven't gotten the phone call yet, but, but nevertheless, uh, I'll still keep coming to worship. I'll still keep giving you the glory. I'll, I'll still keep serving you. Uh, the sickness isn't gone, but, but nevertheless, God, I'll still lift your name on high. The pain is still there, but nevertheless, God, I'll still be obedient to your word. I'll still do what you call me to do because I recognize, amen, that I'm not in control. That God alone, you are in control. I can't manage. Uh, I can't contain the seasons. Mm, some of us have tried to orchestrate and manipulate, but we found out that seasons are uncontrollable. Look, Solomon could not control, amen, his brother uh, trying to, to have a coup in, in, in order to take over the throne uh, after his father David. He couldn't control uh, seasons where he came under attack. Oh my God. He, he couldn't control the seasons where he had financial difficulty. Uh, and that's when he had to surrender unto God. Somebody out there on, on tonight, m maybe this is the point for you where you have recognized that seasons are uncontrollable. You tried your best, a amen, to orchestrate, to turn things around in your own strength. Uh, you've tried to force some stuff uh, in order to shift what is happening, what's taking place in your life. But you can't contain, amen, summer and winter and fall and spring. You got to understand that God is in control. And once you understand that, once you embrace that, you'll be able to declare like Jesus, nevertheless, not my will, God, but thy will be done. Oh, and once you surrender, oh, look at it, y'all. You may have to deal with the cross. You, you may have to Amen. Deal with opposition. You have, may have to deal, amen, with the tax. But, but the good part is that will only last for a season. That there will come a time, even if you get knocked down, when God will raise you back up. <laughs> uh, just like the Lord. Yeah, they attacked him. They put him on the cross. They, they crucified him. He died. They put him in the tomb. But God raised him up. Resurrection is coming for somebody out there listening on, on tonight. You've been knocked down. You've been counted all out. You, you've been written off. Yeah, guess what? Amen. God, amen, has a season where you're going to bounce back. Yeah, he's going to come back and elevate you, promote you. He's going to take you higher than where you were before. Man, 
I feel the spirit of the living God. I feel that so many people got blessed on tonight. Look, if you got blessed on tonight, come on, clap your hands. Write something on the screen. Amen. Let me know how God has spoken to you on, on tonight. Yeah, click that share button. If you've been blessed on tonight, amen, I want you to click that share button. Share this page, amen, to your timeline so that others can be blessed as well. Look, there may be somebody out there that, that's unsaved. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. Guess what? God's got a new season for you. But you can only get that new season Amen. If you confess, amen, uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you do that, he said, old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. You got a new season in store for your life. If you're out there, amen, and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right there on the screen, right there at at, at the inbox. Click on that inbox on the page. Give us your name. Give us your number. Say, I want to be saved. I want a new season. Yeah, I want a better season than what I am experiencing at this time. Reach out to us on tonight. Give us your name. Give us your number. Or if you're out there and you're looking for a church home, yeah, God's got a new season for you. He, he wants you to connect with this branch of Zion. And we would be delighted. We would be honored to have you as a member of this fellowship. So if that's you, reach out to us. Yeah, right there. Inbox us. Give us your name. Give us your number. Say, I want to join. I want to join. I want to join Providence on tonight. Amen we would be the better blessed as a result. Amen. Again, we hope that you have been blessed on, on this evening. We're going to look forward to next week. Amen. As we culminate this series. Amen. So we want you to be in attendance uh, for that. Amen. Don't forget this Sunday is Father's Day. Amen. We're celebrating Father's on Sunday, and so we want you to be present. You ought to bring your father with you, amen, uh, to worship with us on, on this coming Sunday, 10 o'clock. If you're in the Hampton Roads area and, and you're a visitor, amen, on tonight, a amen, we want you to join us on this coming Sunday, amen, in-person worship, amen, from 10 o'clock. Amen. Until 11 o'clock. Amen. We want you to come and join us on this Sunday. We thank you so much. Amen. For worshiping with us on tonight. Amen. For uh, dividing this word that God had for us on tonight. So to all visitors, amen. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you were blessed in some kind of way. We're inviting you out, amen, if you're in the Hampton Roads area to come and worship with us on this coming Sunday. If you're not in the Hampton Roads area, we're encouraging you to tune in on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Don't forget, amen, if you feel like God has gifted you uh, in the transportation ministry, we are in need of van drivers. We want to get our vans back out, amen, picking up. Amen, our members and even visitors so that they can come to worship. Amen. If you are interested in being a van driver, please, amen, call the church office. And give us your name. Give us your number. Before we leave on tonight, we want to give. We want to be obedient to the Lord. We want to give on tonight. Amen. If you've been blessed on tonight, I want you to go to givelify.com. Go to givelify.com. Find Providence Baptist Church, 1331 30th Street, Newport News, Virginia. Amen. Find me as the pastor 
Amen. You can give online right now, giving your giving with your credit card or your debit card. So so do me a favor. Amen. Uh, go to givelify.com or you can go to the cash app. Go to the cash app and put in the dollar sign. Information is there on the screen. Dollar sign. PBC News Live. Dollar sign. PBC News Live. Amen. God, we thank you for tonight and this ongoing study helping us to become better acclimated, acquainted with seasons. Give us, God, the strength that we need to endure the season that we are experiencing at this particular time. Help us Amen, to be mindful of the promise that you've made unto us, that you have declared over our lives, so that we'll remain hopeful despite, amen, the opposition that may be coming against us at this particular time. We understand that trouble don't last always. We understand that what we're dealing with is temporary that it won't last forever. Help us to be mindful that you're shaping us, that you're molding us, yeah, so that we lack nothing, so that we can be prepared for the promise that you have in store for us. So we ask your blessings upon your people on tonight. Grant us your grace and mercy Continue, God, to cover us, provide for us, yeah, and even prepare us for Sunday as we come into this house to worship you in spirit and in truth, to lift your name on high. We give you the glory, the honor. We give you total praise. And it's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. See you on Sunday.